React is slow. Well, kind of. There's a lot of nuance to this conversation that I find gets missed pretty often. And React has a lot of pieces baked in to help it perform better. One of those pieces is React Memo, which allows you to prevent a component or component tree from updating when it doesn't need to. However, React.memo is one of the most misunderstood pieces of React, and I've honestly seen people use it incorrectly more than correctly. Our good friend TK Dodo, mostly known for his contributions to React Query, as well as his incredible blog post series about React Query titled Practical React Query, he wrote an article all about how people use React Memo incorrectly and how to think about it a little bit better. And I was really excited when I saw this existed and wanted to read it with y'all today. So let's take a look. Dominic TK Dodo, absolute goat. If you're not already following him on Twitter, you should fix that before you even continue watching this video because he's a legend. He's making some of the most useful open source contributions in React, as well as some of the best resources we can rely on as React developers. So definitely check him out if you haven't already. His whole blog's incredible, and this post is no exception. So nice, simple, quick uphill battle of memoization. There's lots of good content out there already about what you should do before you reach for react.memo. Dan's post, Before You Memo, from Dan Abramoff, if you're not already familiar, on Overreacted, as well as Kent's Simple Trick to Optimize Re-Renders article. Both of these are incredible. I've read both of these, but this is a very different angle. The idea is to let components composition solve the problem for you, either by moving a state down or lifting content up. This is brilliant because component composition is React's natural mental model. As Dan points out, this will also work well with server components, which are now a reality. What's missing from most of the articles I've read is the why. Yes, composition is great, but what's the problem with using React.memo? Why isn't it as good as a first choice? So here's my take on it. Memo is too easy to break. To recap, when React renders a component tree, it will do so top down for all trees. Children. Once a render has started, there is no way for us to stop it. Mostly that's a good thing because renders make sure that we see a correct reflection of our state on the screen. Also, renders are usually fast. Then of course, there are those edge cases where they aren't. We all have some components that don't render as fast as we wish they could. For some reason, we can't easily change. Luckily, React can still abort renders and it will do so if it sees the same thing. That's what makes techniques like lifting content up work in the first place. So in this case, we moved the hello world and the expensive tree render to be passed as children here. And if children is always the exact same reference, React can short circuit the render. Even if color changes, the expensive tree will not re-render. The benefit here, since this is mounted above, is when this state changes, let's say this changes constantly, like every frame or so, this div and this input will have to re-render. But the children that are being passed in don't, which is really important because with stuff like React server components, the children could be serialized HTML and that just being passed through and guaranteed to not be touched is really, really nice. So moving things that don't change a lot outside of the things that change a lot ideally passing them through, tends to be the best solution a lot of the time. The alternative solution would be to keep rendering everything from within the same component, but slap a React memo around the expensive tree. So we put it in here, we have this expensive component, which isn't that expensive, but for the sake of argument, pretend it is, and then expensive tree, which is react.memo around this. If we wrap a component with react.memo, React will skip rendering that component and its children if its props are unchanged. This will certainly achieve the same result as changing the component composition, but it's a lot easier to break in the future. When a component is memoized, React will compare each prop with object.is. If they haven't changed, re-rendering can be skipped. This works fine in our current example because our component has no props. And it will also work if the props are primitive values like numbers and strings. But as soon as you get into functions, objects, and arrays being passed, it can get rough. Like this example, where we're passing a style to the expensive component, and now we memoized it. This is pretty common, where you have a component and then you add additional props later on, but the thing consuming expensive tree doesn't actually necessarily know that it's memoized. So now when we pass expensive tree style equals background color blue, this object is effectively getting recreated on each render check. So the comparison is going to fail. And now it's going to re-render this every time because it's generated new props. And it's possible that this new object would result in different content being rendered. But if we wrap the memoized style in a React use memo call, this fixes it, so to speak. But you still have no guarantees from above or below that these things aren't going to change in other ways, especially once you have more and more props that are being consumed here. It gets increasingly difficult. Yeah, once style becomes a prop being passed in, you do something innocent like this, well, you don't actually know if the style coming in is use memoed and properly memoized or not. And as soon as there is a value that isn't properly memoized coming into the memoized component, no matter how far away it comes from, you're gonna start running into problems. And the these types of innocent changes where you move the style from in the component to being a prop that you pass through might cause a massive performance issue for your app you didn't predict because it 
it abstracts the slow part away from the thing that can trigger it being slow. I think that's the biggest issue that we'll see in a lot of React code. It's very, very easy to separate the place where the slow thing is from the place that makes it slow. And when you use memo, you have now hidden the slow part in a way where it doesn't seem slow, but any subtle change that doesn't seem like it should affect anything will suddenly make that code slow again. And that's the fear that React memo instills in developers like myself. Oh boy, here's another fun one. If the memoized component accepts children, <laughs> yeah, he didn't know this would break memoization. Why would it? I'm just passing the same stable p tag. Well, JSX is just syntax sugar for react.create element, which creates a new object on every render. If you want to pass children to a memoized component, you need to use memo that JSX render and then pass that memoized element as the child instead. God. We can surely wrap the children we're passing with a use memo, but I hope you're realizing by now that we're fighting an uphill battle that is hardly winnable. Yep, this is the issue. <laughs> the next person might just come by and pass an empty object or raise a fallback value to a prop on our memoized component, and we're back to square one. Yeah, you make one small mistake like this, and it's all over again. So. Using React Memo is a bit of a minefield, and choosing one of the proposed alternatives seems way better to me. But sometimes we seemingly can't avoid a memoization of a component. Let's take a look at the example I've seen on Twitter that sparked the idea for this blog post. I really need to do React performance optimizations, but we have a page with five big tables and a summary box. When one big table changes, everything renders. It's slow. Solution. One, I wrap each table in a memo. Two, I wrap the functions passed down and use callback. Much faster. Looks to me more like state is too high up. If every table had their own state, changing one wouldn't re-render the others. Problem with memo and use callback is that it only takes one prop to screw it all up. Yeah, if you accidentally pass an empty array as a default, there's all your perf wins. So let's see what he said about this here. Here, I expect the component tree to look something like this. I'm using two tables instead of five for brevity. So table one, table two, both of these are in state together and they're both being passed here. State holds the data of both tables and the summary bar needs access to all of it. We can't move state down into the tables and we also can't compose the components in a different way. It seems that memoization is our only option. So yeah, in this particular case, memoizing probably makes a lot of sense if the state has to live here. Don't start rendering. Remember when I said that once a render started, we have no way of stopping it? That's still true, but what if we'd stop the render from starting in the first place? If state wouldn't live at the top of the app, we wouldn't need to re-render the whole tree whenever it changes. But where could it live instead? We've already established we can't move it down, so let's put it to the side, outside of React. This is precisely what most state management solutions do. They store the state outside of React and surgically trigger re-renders of the parts of the component tree that need to know about what changes. If you used React Query before, this is exactly what happens there as well. Without that technique, you'd see way more re-renders than you'd like to. So yes, my proposed alternative solution is to bring in an effective state manager. I'm gonna use Zustan because it's the one I'm most familiar with. It's a really nice example. We create a store, it has these two values in it, and it has actions, which are things that operate on the store. These would be things like add to table or remove from table. You're in the things you put in here, which Again, this is just a random key he chose, but it's very easy within created Zustan store to call the set function in functions you define. So now the store has these behaviors that will trigger updates externally, which if hooked into with React hooks, will trigger those internally in React. So here we have exported custom hooks for use table one data and use table two data, as well as a use summary data. And my assumption is that all of these hooks are going to be placed in different places. And ideally, the ones that are the most expensive aren't going to be too close to the top, and all of these will be called near the leaves. So the renders only affect those elements. Now every component can subscribe internally to the state it is interested in, avoiding any top-down renders. If table two data updates, table one won't re-render. This is as effective as memoizing the tables, but won't suffer from the pitfalls when adding new props that can negatively impact performance. A way out. Granted, all solutions we have here are not great. Memoizing in general makes our code harder to read and it's easy to get wrong, which makes it the worst option for me. Using external state managers is a bit better. You might have that dependency in your app anyway. Adapting the way you compose components is still the best option, but it's not always possible. What would really be a way out is if we change the rules of the game. Records and tuples, an ECMAScript proposal that's in stage two for quite some time, would help us with arrays and objects, but not for functions. Sebastian Lorber has a great read on that. I haven't actually read this one. Records and tuples for React. Interesting, I'll be sure to read that in the future. The React team has also hinted that they are working on a compiler called React Forget, which will supposedly memoize everything for us automatically. With that in place, we can get the perf optimizations of React.memo without the error surface. Make sure you're following TK, because he, more so than almost anybody on Twitter, exclusively provides value. Like, I'm just going to scroll through and look at some random tweets. Every single one of these is going to be useful. API design. Avoid optional params if they are mutually exclusive. That's a very useful point, and I'm sure he broke it down great. 
Shorter to write is one of my favorite arguments for anything, really. It's the reason I stopped programming in COBOL here. Like one of the highest signal to noise ratios of anybody on the platform. Please follow him if you haven't already. Great content, great dude, great blog posts. Thank you all as always. I know React performance is a scary topic. I hope this shows you some strategies to mitigate it. Generally speaking, the simpler you make things in terms of how state lives and the closer you attach the things rendering to the data that it's rendering with, the better things will perform. And it's really cool seeing authors like TK Dodo going out of their way to write useful quality resources explaining why these trade-offs matter so much. Appreciate all of you. As always, I'll pin a video in the corner here with all sorts of other fun things you can do with React if you weren't familiar. Performance matters more than ever in some of those examples. Appreciate y'all a ton. See you guys next time. Peace nerds.